This is The Process Shot. I'm Michael, I'm stuck in a movie theater, and now I've seen Snow Beast. So, I guess I can say I've done something today. Anyways, it's a movie that will probably sound familiar to anyone who has seen a horror movie like this before. You've got a freakish monster thing who's kind of just hanging around near a populated area that attacks and kills people who gets in its reach. You've got a concerned individual who acknowledges the danger in conflict with a community leader who wants a big tourist event to go on without a hitch. And you've got the eventual hunt for the monster by way of a ragtag posse. Snow Beast, directed by Herb Wallerstein and released in 1977, separates itself by copying the previously stated formula and setting it up in a mountain ski resort, with a yeti lurking as the winter festival waits below. As you can guess, if you've seen Jaws, a ripoff of Jaws, or even a parody of Jaws, then you'll have an idea of how Snow Beast works. The story is heavily drawn from that film, with a few twists of its own, such as flat characters with undeveloped motivations, or a clearly low production budget that's used as an excuse to show less instead of working around its limitations. To clarify that, the movie tries to employ the same sort of suspense that Jaws had by not actually showing off the film's monster, but where it worked out well in that film by creating tension, in Snow Beast it simply comes through as though they had nothing to actually show off at all. And what we do actually get to see of the killer yeti doesn't at all make any payoff worth it. It's actually more anticlimactic than anything, just like the film's deaths, all of which happen off screen so that they don't have to spend any money on makeup or special effects. As for the main human characters, they're hardly anything worth your attention. Their character arcs are essentially non-existent, and their motivations little more than we have to kill the beast. Hell, they're so unmemorable that I can't even recall their names. If there's anything at all to their relationships, it's the development of a love triangle between the three main characters and the subsequent failure to actually do anything with that plotline. I mean, it's in there but it doesn't actually go anywhere, and it's pretty much resolved off-screen for the most part. After that, the movie basically becomes focused on finding and killing the Yeti, an act which takes its sweet time. The entire film is filled with long, slow takes from the Yeti's point of view, which I imagine are meant to be suspenseful, but just end up as padding when they fill out several minutes of an already condensed runtime. If the movie does have anything in its favor, it's probably the cinematography. Being shot on location, it uses the opportunity for some rather pleasant views of the snowy mountains and the wideness of the ski resort and slopes. It makes for a nice distraction for the audience to keep them from noticing how little anything of actual interest is going on. But, as is the case with any movie, looking pretty isn't enough to carry an actual film. Snow Beast seems to rely on a lot of stuff to carry it all the way home, but in doing so fails to be a movie worth actually waiting up for. Everything happens because it has a formula to follow. And in the end, the film abandons any sense of originality in favor of, well, a whole lot of nothing. Snow Beast. Herb Wallerstein, 1977. Half a star. I don't recommend seeing this movie. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. Oh, right. Uh, this movie has Clint Walker in it. Just like Killdozer. 
this movie also has commercial breaks too.